Uh, what's up? Uh, this is a deck that me and the other people, my little team, I guess, if you will. So myself, uh, Connor, and Karako Kamachi thought of. Um, we just started messing around with it yesterday, and it is pretty good. I would say that it is a very advanced deck. Um, it combines a lot of abstract ideas and requires, I would say, a fairly in-depth understanding of the game in order to uh, truly uh, grasp what it's about and how to use it. That sounds incredibly elitist, but uh, I know that I couldn't show this list to a lot of people just as the list and have people uh, take from that what they would with say any other deck if I were to just show a list they would understand to a greater degree what what um what the list is trying to achieve so rather than just talk about a list I've broken it down to explain and I'll try and do as best I can in 15 minutes cuz you know YouTube are uh, smelly so it's 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 interesting and I I'm going to pursue it a little bit I don't know how much I'll pursue it but um, yeah, it's an interesting thought experiment. So, it starts out with the ninja engine. Now, bear in mind that there are six cards in this engine. It isn't extensive, um, and there are reasons for that. So, I play three Hanzo, just because it's the best. One white dragon ninja, and then two of each trap. So, one super transformation and one regular transformation. So, Hanzo... The idea with this is that um, Mamelio, obviously there are only four, no sorry, <laughs> what am I talking about? There, there are only three Mamelios in the game, um, so it's interesting to find other things with Mamelio-esque effects. Hanzo is like Mamelio in that it searches a trap, albeit not as good as Mamelio in that Mamelio searches a very powerful and a very generic trap. Hanzo's effect is still similar enough to uh, have synergy with Mamelio, just in that both of them are searches for traps. And you can embellish on the engine quite a lot. You could run the second White Dragon Ninja and the second and third Super Transformation, etc. But I've played with that type of structure before because I have had this deck since since it came out really so three three years i guess um when i i think that when you focus on a structure like that it creates many inconsistencies because the trap is the super trap is not itself that great uh, if you draw it without the hanzo then it's very dead and obviously white dragon ninja is awful to draw it's essentially a minus one when you have the white dragon ninja in hand so in my mind, I wanted to reduce the amount of times I would do that, so I ran one. Even if you do draw the one, it isn't the end of the world. It just means that the super transformation is dead, and if you happen to draw that or search that, then it is also a minus one. Um, however, the likelihood is that you won't draw the white dragon ninja. And if you don't draw the white dragon ninja, then super transformation is a rather potent trap, considering how monster-based the game is, and it outs more or less everything it outs a lot of things uh, particularly the hands um, so because of that it forces the opponent to adapt their playstyle that was the main idea with this deck is that Mamelio just as Mamelio searches bottomless and then forces the opponent to play awkwardly hands are searching super transformation forces people to play awkwardly because they can't overcommit for fear of uh, triggering your trap and then you drop a 2-7 beta that protects your back row um, that's all it really is. I, I don't focus on particular locks with White Dragon Ninja too much. I don't, um, I don't even care if I resolve it, to be honest. It's, it's just the fact that it creates awkward play patterns for the opponent. And then the one regular transformation is because just as Super Transformation pressures the opponent's monsters, uh, forces them to making awkward plays with that, the regular trap um, makes their back row pressurized because of Mamelio. So you use the trap, you get the Mamelio and pop, pop a back row. That's the, uh, that's the main idea. So the engine is very concise, it's just six cards. 
but it does what it needs to do very effectively and that was the main premise for the deck it wasn't it wasn't a ninja deck so much as a um it it, it isn't even a pressure deck it's it's a uh reactive reactive control i guess in that all the traps are reactive but they force the opponent to play out of their way in order to um to prevent playing into them so it's yes it's reactive but the pluses are themselves proactive which is the nicest thing is that you could summon a mamelio and get a search and summon hands and get a search it's proactively searching reactive traps to control the game that was the idea with the deck so explain that with the six ninjas don't run anymore because you don't need to so then because of that you can easily accommodate the six trap tricks three mamelio and three dna i wouldn't run three dna and hat but the reason why DNA works really well in here is because you have a way to search it because of this trap. The regular transformation art turns your hands into a Mamelio. And then because of that, you have the Mamelio for the DNA eventually. Um, and it gives the deck a power play, which it does quite desperately need. So that is essentially it if you have the mamelio mamelio searches all your trap holes if you have the hanzo hanzo searches your transformation arts the hanzo can either get the white dragon ninja which forces the opponent to play awkwardly with their monsters or the trap which uh the regular trap which um clears a back row and is is, is of course chainable so if you attack with hanzo and they activate the prison or something or book here at any point then you can just chain the regular trap or quite often you'll activate super transformation and they'll respond with a book or a lance or something and then you'll chain the regular trap the regular trap can also tribute white dragon ninja in order to special summon a mamelio so all these cute little tricks um particularly with the regular transformation art bridge uh dna -er to the rest of the deck in particular not necessarily mamelio but dna -er. and um so that's that as, as aspect of the deck and then there's another aspect which I feel like I should explain, which is what I would call, I guess, the accelerant aspect of the deck. Um, in that you play these cards in order to enable you to make accelerated plays, accelerated rank four plays, really out of nowhere. They aren't they they aren't unfair. They aren't either here or there. But with a deck like this. It's, it's interesting, this is the real weird part, I guess, when I talk about the combination of ideas that myself and my teammates have had for a while. This is where really abstract sort of ideas uh, come into the deck. But it makes sense in that by running cards that enable you to rank for more instantly with cards that have done their purpose in Mamelio and Hanzo, because Hanzo is ultimately just a floater, although it's one that you would ideally like to keep around to use its effect. Um, it enables you to accelerate the deck and actually make that advantage more tangible, particularly with something like Mamelio. So, because of that, these are the five accelerant things that I run. So, two instant fusion, two soul charge, and a bubble man. Now, all of these are essentially the remaining monsters, if you think about it. So, instant fusion and soul charge, uh, they, they are traps. Sorry, what? They, they are spells. Um, um. I just saw the Mamelio and thought traps. I'm an idiot. Um, yeah, they, they are spells, but they're essentially monsters. Instant Fusion is essentially a monster, and Soul Charge within this function is, is essentially a monster. So, uh, I run the Instant Fusion because it enables some really good early game plays, and it, it just enables you to make a Rank 4, and with the Rank 4 toolbox, you're able to establish presence. So that's really what Instant Fusion enables you to do. It allows you to turn your pluses of things like Mamelio and Hanzo into actual presence via the rank 4s at the expense of 1000. So um, common plays will be something like Summon Mamelio, Search, uh, Bottomless, Use Instant Fusion, Overlay for Lovable Chain, Detach Mamelio, Put DNA on top of your deck, something like that. Um, amongst other things instant fusion does have a lot of synergy with the deck just because of the way the deck is with all its little the floaters that don't necessarily do a whole lot having more of a rank 4 impetus does help a lot 
So instant fusion, um, instant fusion was a really interesting idea that has worked out really well since I've opted for it, and that may extend to other decks. I'll have to experiment with the instant fusion and see how that goes, but for now I'm very pleased with how that is working out. And then two soul charge, soul charge, um, its its function really depends on the deck that it is in, but in this deck it's similar to hat in that it is just a means of recycling monsters and. Uh, restocking, I guess, restocking monsters, so, um, Dichotomy has a lot of synergy with this deck, but it's just not as good as Soul Charge, because Soul Charge creates a, a rank 4, at least, if, if anything, the fact that you do run Instant Fusion means that the life point cost acquired through Soul Charge can be quite steep, which would be in Dichotomy's favour, but... Honestly, soul, soul Charge is great, um, it enables you to play more aggressively because you can recompense your advantage having lost it via the Soul Charge, and late game it just creates really interesting plays, um, bringing back Mamelio to clip back or obviously, but even things like bringing back DNA to reset trap holes, just to ensure that for that one turn you have um, whatever is your end field that that field is going to be safe and then hopefully that will be enough to win you the game over the course of uh, realistically one turn because the soul charge turn is a fake turn because you can't attack can't actually capitalize on that momentum so that's all soul charge is it's, it's, it's an extra monster and the bubble man is because we run two rota and we found that we had a deficit of monsters um and the bubble man was just an interesting idea it it is also an accelerant card so you'll just set your hand rota into bubble man special bubble man if you have a Mamele or something else on the field, obviously, then um, it allows you to make rank plays. So it's just a rotor target that can perform Instant Fusion's function. Uh, but yeah, the, it's, it's good because it's searchable, basically. Um, so that's interesting. It's all interesting. Um, hopefully that, that made sense. So... I'll, I'll go over the whole build now, just because I wanted to establish uh, that that thing, that those the, those aspects of the decks first, before I just said the list, because otherwise I'd say the list and people would just be like, what on earth is going on? Everything is so weird. Um, no, it isn't weird. It's just it's just abstract, but it it is very very good at doing what it does. Um, it's, it is a very, very advanced deck, and it's a good deck. I wouldn't say it's the best deck, but it is a good deck. So, just to quickly skim through with the two minutes. Uh, three Mamelio, three Dino. One Bubble Man. Oh, that's not bad. <laughs> one Bubble Man. Uh, three Hanzo, one Ride Dragon Ninja. Three Duality. And three Upstart. Two instant fusion and two soul charge. Then two rota. Rota is also obviously essentially a monster. Then two lance. I would like to put in the third or another dress. The build isn't complete. It's just a combination of things. So one book, one dark hole, and one MST. Then two nightmare. One safe zone, I'll probably drop it for a dress. Uh, one emptiness, I would probably drop that as well. I want to put three mirror force in just to see how that works out. Uh, one compulse, one bottomless, one TT, one breakthrough, probably drop that for a mirror force. One transmigration, transmigration is really interesting, um, but it is a very good card at the moment. And it worked out quite well in the main, so I'll, I'll experiment more with it. Again, I've only been playing this deck for a day, like we literally built it yesterday. But we did get relatively advanced in our testing, irrespective of the fact that it is so uh, new. Uh, one warning, and then the two transformation traps. So, this deck is incredibly cheap, which is an incentive for a lot of you to go run it. But it's even even if it isn't the best deck, it's just a very interesting thought, pro, uh, thought experiment. But yeah, it actually is a very good deck, so thank you for watching, and... Go try it out. I'm very proud of it.